I do not recall why, but for some reason, I perceived myself as female then and there. Do I confirm this by looking at myself? No. I just go along with it, I guess. And, uh, ooh, here come the people who are going to say, egg moment. No. No. Okay. And then, so I'm standing on the beach, on the shore of a beach, and I have a loincloth on, apparently, I guess. And there's a group of three, four native women, you know, dark olive skin, but sort of Caucasian features in the water offshore, maybe 50 meters out. And they're attempting to escape or avoid four or five men of which I assume are slavers or something like that. I don't know another word for it. Um, and they evade by swimming circles, if that makes sense. So these people do not move more than a few meters from where they are currently. I get in the water and I swim out to figure out what is going on. And uh, I dive in the shallow water. It's only maybe like eight or so meters deep, I guess. And uh, I swim through, you know, underneath the water, through their scuffle, just right through the middle of it. And I, you know, swim through, obviously. And after this, I forget what happens, but suddenly. I am in a town or neighborhood that to the closest I can describe it as is what the street looked like in the Edward Scissor Scissorhands movie. You know, all the houses are vibrant colors, purples, yellows, greens, but there is no street going down the middle. There's no lights, mailboxes, or anything like this. All the homes are very close together, and just right down the middle is a stony path. It's not light outside. The sky is completely dark. No stars, no moon. But, you know, it's it's dark, but everything else is well lit where I am. Or as you... If that makes sense at all. Um, but, every, yeah. There are bipedal animals all around the place. Think Animal Crossing, to the closest I can describe it as. And, uh... We're all standing in the unofficial center of this neighborhood on the on the path. And the only two creatures which I can remember right now are a giraffe and a purple elephant. And they're talking about something. But they take a large pencil, maybe about 26 centimeters, and can draw in the air. And uh, drawing in the air produces a crayon-like effect. You know, when you take a sparkler and you're doing that, those movements on camera or whatever. And uh, when they draw in the air, they whatever they draw comes to life. So say the elephant grabbed the pencil and they drew a spiral creature and it appeared as a spiral creature, like, you know, a familiar. And it, you know, the elephant hands it to me and uh, I don't know what to draw, but the next thing I know is I have a tiny, chubby, fat, fae-like creature with me. And the elephant suggests we go to this snake's house. I don't know exactly what it was, but the best I could describe it as, you know, snake. To uh, stop him. Stop him from doing what? I don't know. I can't remember that. But uh, the snake's house is at the end of the street. Or path with a small stream to the right of it so blocking you know any further movement that way and uh, suddenly we now stand in front of you know the house and the snake snake creature comes out but he resembles the uh, the conductor from a hat in time but a serpent lower half body no clothes on doesn't matter anyways because it doesn't have you know nipples or anything like that so to enter but to enter his home we have to get rid of him so f somehow some way I hand him a cigarette and I know 
that this cigarette explodes into fireworks when you light it up or, you know, take a draw. And I, you know, I hand it to him. He, you know, he starts smoking it. It explodes into fireworks, but this doesn't get rid of him. I take it back from him to wonder what is going on. No, no, I take a single draw and then I hand it back to him. He smokes again. Fireworks explode. And this time it kills him by launching him in, into space or the air or somewhere. But, you know, he's gone from that point. And uh, the fake creature and I enter the home. The living room resembles one I saw while delivering mail at one point. It's just, you know, a sort of rectangle uh, living, central living room. There's nothing special about it. It just has this old, you know, the senior feeling to it. But from there, the Fae and I split off somewhere. I don't know where that Fae creature goes. But I head towards the back through this hallway. And from here, the layout is near identical to my grandmother's house. So it's a long hallway. And there's a bathroom on the right. And then there's a linen closet to the right. And right at the end of this hallway, there's a doorway and a door closed. So I... You know, I, I open the rear bedroom door, look to my left, and there's an old telly with a sort of gaming system on a stack of milk crates. And uh, then this long, black-haired, young, you know, boy, man, and he is chained to the ankle by the floor, chained, to, chained by the ankle to the floor, and uh, or somewhere but the chain is, you know, attached to somewhere I can't see. And uh, he speaks a language which I don't understand at all. And proceeds to grab a large pot. You know, think of the ones you cook crab and lobsters in. And he spits in it. And then he takes a white rag and he tears off a bit. Throws it in the pot too. And somehow, he's able to launch it. Like, you know, a mortar. But there's no, you know, gunpowder or effects or anything explosions it just launches the spitballs or bombs at me but anyways he thinks I'm there to hurt him and maybe you're after standing there and avoiding five or so what called spit bombs he puts the pot down and I approach him the chain suddenly is you know not existent anymore and then he says to me we have to escape before he comes back you know he referring to the snake man whereas I don't understand why he said comes back because I got rid of him or as I considered you know kill him killed him with the uh, fireworks cigarettes or whatever and suddenly you know we're outside I'm, I'm guessing we climb through the back window but we're aboard a but we climb aboard this red international tractor and we're driving along a dirt road which runs side by side with a highway but this dirt road is, you know, elevated above the highway, if that makes sense. So we've got the highway to the left and the dirt road to the right, but it's up on a hill. And you can look down. And, uh, uh, where's, yeah, to about the right is snowy ground where it looks like it just snow maybe like one or two days ago and uh i look to the left and there's a row of new development houses and this these houses resemble really a place that i've seen before while driving down in the the highway in the south, southern end of the city and uh To, if I look forwards to the left, there's a Kenworth semi sleeper with a clean white trailer attached to it, and it's driving about the same speed as us, but it's still ahead, if that makes sense. And I look forward, you know, completely forward again. I look down at the at the boy, and he's looking forward as well. I don't, I don't know. And then uh, I feel this cool breeze against my face and 
I wake up again. And it, the dream ends there because I'm, you know, I'm late for work, so... Let's go get out of bed, whoosh.